unimaginable. Season two of The Unimaginable hones in on individuals who have led unimaginable lives by following their instinct from guests like Taika Waititi. Stick to your to your vision of what you're trying to do. It's just more pure. The failure is more pure and the success is more pure. This season delivers behind the scenes conversations about the many roads to success. Listen to The Unimaginable on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Scott Barry Kaufman, host of The Psychology Podcast. I'm a cognitive scientist, and I've written 10 books and hundreds of articles on topics such as intelligence, introversion, and education. The Psychology Podcast is a place where we investigate the different ways in which we can unlock human potential, and where I get to interview some of the most extraordinary and fascinating people, and we have real conversations about what it means to achieve success and what it means to be human. Listen to The Psychology Podcast on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Dwayne Wade, and I've been blessed to have so many titles so far in my life. But now I'm adding podcast hosts with my new podcast called The Why with Dwayne Wade. On this show, I will have intimate conversations with some of the biggest names in sports, in music, in entertainment, in fashion. And we will discuss the whys in their lives. Listen to The Why with Dwayne Wade on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you can get your podcast. Hi, everyone. It's Amanda Reeker Green. Welcome to Soul Sessions and welcome to February. If you remember, I've been like, February is the new freaking year. So are you ready? Because I certainly am. And can you f- have you felt the buildup and the shift in energy? I mean, it's like we're ready. We're ready for the breakout, the breakthrough, the new incentive to really crystallize in our lives. It's coming. It's happening. The energy is present and there, move through it. And I will tell you, there's some wonky backlash in the energy field. So many of you, my friends, clients, listeners alike, have been reaching out and telling me about all the synchronicities they're experiencing. And it, first of all, it ter- totally turns me on because I'm like, you're tuned in, you're paying attention, you're engaging with the field. I mean, wild stuff is happening for people. And sometimes there's no rhyme or reason to it. Like you can't always figure out the meaning to synchronicity. It's more like it's just happening. That's always a signal. Even if you don't know what it means, all these little glitches in the field are showing you that energy is speeding up, changing and shifting. The other thing that's happening, and I just did this Instagram post on this. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, maybe you should. (laughs) Shout out soul pathology. But I did a post and I talked about how when we have these massive energy shifts, we experience them physically. I have literally gotten nauseous. I've had ringing in my ears. I've had a headache. I felt completely disassociated from my body when I was with this group of women. We were sitting, we were enjoying each other, sharing good company. I was well-rested, well-fed, well-hydrated, nothing, not stressed, like at a really good space in my life and day. And all of a sudden, I felt my consciousness and my spirit, almost like my full-on astral body, like suck out of my body. And then my whole body was tingling Kind of like when you have the flu or a lot of head congestion and that equilibrium is off. So you it's almost like your brain's rattling around in your head. <laughs> this is the best way I know to describe it. Like it wasn't painful, but it was like there was spaciousness in my cranium and then I could feel my energy field tingling. And of course, I'm thinking, is anybody else experiencing this? And they're just going on about their conversation. And I'm like, I'm here, but I am not here here. And then a few hours later, and I mean, I came back in, it it like jolted back into my body. But a few hours later, I had a a really terrible headache, like a tension headache, but it, it was blurring my vision. And then I got nauseous. And what was interesting about that, and I want to share this with you, if you've been experiencing things, another friend reached out and said, what about shaking? Like, I've been just kind of shaking a little bit. That's, that's another sign too. anything that you experience that is kind of strange and acute 
it's not anything to be scared of. Like, oh, shoot, there's something wrong with me. Now, of course, you listen to your body and be mindful for you. But in general, if something feels like it's just not natural or normal and it is kind of acute and preoccupying you and it feels foreign, not right, first of all, be like, okay, something's happening. Whoa. I'm like some kind of physiological, physical consciousness shift is happening. Go with it. And then you can also say to your guides, to your soul, to the energy field, to God, whatever. Hey, can you turn the volume down a little bit? This is a little too intense for me. And I tell you where I heard that the very first time it was years ago from Dolores Cannon. Dolores Cannon is the great channel and medium who also did tons of hypnotherapy and past life regression. And she was, she was incredible. But that's the first time I heard her say, she said, Hey, y'all turn the volume down on this consciousness shift. Cause it's actually, it's too much for me to integrate right now. So you, you are sovereign and guess what? That goes with the theme of February. February is a one universal month in an eight universal year. And if there is any combo that says freaking rock and roll kids, It's this combo because the one is the fire starter. It's like the horse out of the gates. It is all about pioneering something, individuating yourself. Remember from the Pluto and Aquarius podcast, I was like, it's about individuation. This also personifies that energy, that Aquarian energy of what is the future bringing and how am I engaging with it? What path and journey am I embarking on that feels true? It's a little scary. It's a little daunting. I don't know how it's all going to happen, but it's a call in my soul. What is calling your soul? What is your deep down dream desire that you want to manifest? You want to bring into the material world and get out of your own way. Okay. Because the energy of the one is very individual. It's like, I got this. I don't need any help. You know, I'm on my own. Nobody's going to help me with this. I have to figure it all out on my own? No, you don't. You freaking have guides. You have a soul. You have a higher power, a higher consciousness. And look at the glitches in the energy field. Something is happening. And even if you can't pinpoint exactly what that call to action is, sit down and ask. Sit down, get silent, especially as we shift from the very end of January into February. And I love the numerology for February 1st, by the way. If you just want to do the numerology of the day, February is the second month of the year. The first is a one. So two plus one equals three. So there's a three in the energy field. And then when you add three plus 2024, which is eight, three plus eight, that equals 11. Hello, which is the two, but it's also the interconnection of the human and the spiritual. So you've got this powerful one energy for February, which is the eight universal year. February is the second month. Eight plus two equals 10. All right, stick with me. February is a one universal month. February 1st is a three day in an 11 energy, which is a two. So you've got a one, two, three code. Uh, That makes me think of um, outcast. One, two, three. (laughs) Sorry, you don't want me singing. But anyway, that's like, that's, hey, y'all. Like, I'm like, hey, hey," which is a really good theme song. And you know what? You should freaking have a a theme song for this month. I've been listening to Murder on the Dance Floor, you know, like, and I have been jamming to Murder on the Dance Floor on repeat in my car and moving and grooving. Pick a freaking theme song for this month. Hey, y'all would be a really good one. Whatever jives with you, but something that gets you up going and gets your prana, your life force, your fire sparked. It's a fire star starter energy. So the one, two, three code, let me say that first. One, the energy of initiation. Two, the energy of working with something greater, something higher, or what's available to you in your environment. The other, your friendships, your relationships, your resources. Who am I and how am I engaging my relationships? And again, even your relationship with yourself or your soul. And then the three is the energy of what am I creating? Creativity and communication and connection. So it's a very powerful code on the first. So the first is a really good day to take a little bit of time to slow your roll because it's not a slow your roll kind of month. Like you're, and guess what? You're going to be freaking scattered this month. So just 
don't stress about it. Like if you feel overwhelmed, when you do be like, okay, everything's gonna get done, let me make a list. The one doesn't really like to make lists, so guess what? Do what the one doesn't like to do because it'll up level it. Make a freaking list. Don't don't get bogged down in your fear because guess what the eight incites more than anything? Fear and freaking disempowerment. So I felt some fear today and I couldn't pinpoint it. It was like, I felt overwhelmed, kind of like, oh gosh, I've got a busy week. I have things going on. Am I accomplishing anything? And I was, my day was normal, right? I was getting things done. I was being productive, but I felt this kind of fear creep in, like, what if? And I don't even know what it was, but I didn't buy into it for too long. I just said, okay, you're good. You're good. Why are you, why are you having a dialogue with your fear? That's not productive. Remember the energy of the eight, whatever you focus on grows. So I'm not going to feed that beast, that fear beast. Heck no. Do not forget that this month because a massive, massive blind spot and just a little shout out to the 2024 numerology book that is out. And it dives into the numerology of every single month, the numerology code. There are mantras, there are themes, there are details for working with the one and the eight this month, crystal recommendations, journal prompts, strategies, blind spots, but one blind spot I will let you in on without giving too much of that guidebook away. And I think you all would will really enjoy this. But it's the self-doubt that accompanies the energy of the one. Because even though the one is bold and courageous and action-oriented, wants to tackle tackle life, tackle their goals, tackle what's in front of them. Sometimes they want to fight with people <laughs> like they're fighters, like some, because they, they're fighting for either what they believe in or what they're achieving. So sometimes there can be battles. But the self-doubt is like, shoot, like, can I really accomplish this? Am I an imposter? Do people really believe in me? Am I just making this up in my head? Is this dream a pipe dream? Am I not enough or not worthy? And I tell you what, you wouldn't have a dream seated in your heart and in your soul if it wasn't coming into conscious awareness for you to pay attention to it. And it may not be exactly as you envision it today. In fact, pretty much it will not be the exact envisioning you have of it. I mean, it might be pretty darn close. Don't get me wrong. And it, if, if it's spot on, go you. But in general, when you start collaborating and co-creating with the essence of a dream, with the essence of an aim or an ambition, and you allow your guides and spirit and your experiences to start navigating and collaborating with you, it can become more abundant. And again, that taps into the infinite potential of the eight. But what is most important this month is harnessing your point of attraction. So just like me telling you, I was feeling this overwhelm and weird anxiety creep in. And I, I very quickly, resiliently, cornerstone of the eight energy, how resilient can you be in moving through something? And if it's creative, when you feel creative, oh, I want to get I want to get out there. I want to express myself. I want to do something. I want to take action. Harness your inspiration, harness your enthusiasm, your creativity. If it is fear based, anxiety, overwhelm, frustration, uh, if you're battling an illness and you're just freaking cranky because you've got chronic pain or you're, you're feeling sorry for yourself. I mean, because God knows when we are in pain and it is chronic and debilitating, it creates a lot of irritation and dis-ease in the field. So it's a natural human response to feel um, self-pity. But self-doubt, that fear, if you, the longer you buy into that conversation, the longer you perpetuate it and you actually diminish, disempower your point of attraction, that point of view that is always sending signals out into the field. And you always want to come back to, wait a minute, am I sending out a signal of clarity, love, peace, joy, compassion, inspiration, enthusiasm, abundance out into the field? Or am I sending a signal of judgment, sloth, greed, <laughs> annoyance, self-pity, selfishness and self-centeredness, whatever it is that is creeping up for you, how can you process it? And, and the one forgets to ask for freaking help. 
because it's so independent. So don't forget to ask for help along the way. Who can you ask for help from your higher power, your guides? What about your spirit animal? Have y'all been working with your spirit animal? Remember how we talked about that a few podcasts ago? Pick a spirit animal for 2024. Is that spirit animal showing up? Are you still engaging? Keep on track, people. Incorporate these things. This is a year where consistency pays out. And you don't have to be a drill sergeant about, am I thinking about my spirit animal for today? No, like notice when it comes up or somebody mentions it in a TV show or you see the animal out in the room real world. I mean, if your spirit animal is a T-Rex, I have a friend that's her spirit animal this year. It's a Tyrannosaurus Rex. I mean, if she were to encounter one in real life, I would have her on the show. We would talk about that. But your spirit animal can be a freaking dragon. You know, if if she can have a T-Rex, you can have a dragon. So, you know, you can have a blue jay as easily as you can have a dragon. But work with that spirit animal medicine and go back to it. What are the challenging vibrations, the negative kind of limiting energies of that animal? And then what are the opportunities? How do you harness that energy? So it's a very ambitious month. Definitely to streamline it because the one energy, like I said, it can get scattered and it forgets to finish things. I would absolutely set a goal and an aim for this month. So difference between a goal and an aim. Let's map that out for a second. As the number one audio company, iHeartMedia gives you access to all. Every audience, live conversations, trusted influencers, and the insights and data you need to grow. iHeartMedia is your access company. Go to iHeartResults.com for more. Hi, it's Jenna Ashkowitz. And Kevin McHale. Hosts of And That's What You Really Miss podcast. We're reliving the magic of McKinley High by watching all six seasons of Glee. Whether you were Team Rachel, shipped Curtin Blaine, or couldn't get enough of Sue Sylvester's zingers, we've got you covered. Join us every week as we dive deep into the world of show choirs and teenage drama. We're breaking down every episode from the highs of nationals to the lows of slushy attacks. We have exclusive interviews with some of your favorite Glee cast members like Chris Colfer, Amber Riley, Darren Chris. Heather Morris, Alex Newell, and so many more. Plus, we're taking you behind the scenes with the creators, writers, producers, and crew members like Ryan Murphy, Ian Brennan, and executive music producer Adam Anders. We're even getting the chance to chat with the music icons whose songs were featured on the show, from the Go-Go's to Jason Mraz to Rick Springfield. Meet us in the choir room while we reveal our greatest memories and untold stories. Listen to And That's What You Really Miss podcast on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. 911, what's your emergency? You have to send someone. What's going on? Well, whatever it is, that's our entire emergency force on the way somewhere. Saying there's a body in the woods. Excuse me, I don't seem to recognize you. Um, that's because I'm not from here. A small town stuck in the past. There's only one cell tower, and currently it's out of order. With secrets hidden for centuries. We hear things, you know, when they whisper or when they think they're alone. And a curious stranger who may be their only chance for survival. I'm talking about the murder and disappearance in small town New Hampshire. What do you think? I'm sorry, have you ever listened to a single true crime podcast? You turn up in Danville just as the town sees its first real crime in decades? This is Consumed, an all-new supernatural audio thriller inspired by the novel by Aaron Mankey. I did not wake up this morning prepared to deal with forces beyond my understanding. Please, I call that breakfast. Listen to Consumed on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. I would absolutely set a goal and an aim for this month. So difference between a goal and an aim. Let's map that out for a second. It doesn't have to be anything massive or overwhelming, but it's like this month, I would like to consistently drink more water. Like I want to hydrate better this month. So you see, like I didn't go for today I want to win an Emmy, you know, like that was, <laughs> I don't know how that would happen because I don't think I could be nominated for an Emmy, but I'm just saying like, I didn't reach so far beyond because I'm not doing anything to win an Emmy. So you see why, why would I want to do that this month? So, so stay in your lane, but set a goal that feels like it's contributing to your health. 
And I, it doesn't have to be physical health, meaning it can be your mental health, your emotional health. Yes, your physical health, your spiritual health. Like I'm going to engage with my spirit animal on a daily basis, some way, shape or form, you know, which means I'm going to engage with my guides. I'm going to engage with something greater that may not be exactly tangible, but that I am engaging with an energy, a thought, something that I'm aspiring towards. And what I was saying about a goal and an aim, let's go back to I'd like to drink more water this month. So if I were setting that as a goal, I would set an intention and let's just I'm going to arbitrarily pull this out. It is my intention that each day over the course of February, I will drink 60 ounces or more of water and I will feel hydrated, purified, clarified, and healthy. So do you see what I did with that 60 ounces or more? So I didn't say I will drink at least 60 ounces. I didn't say I will drink 60 ounces. I said I will drink 60 ounces or more. And sometimes I might put in there, I will organically be thirsty for and naturally drink 60 ounces or more of water a day. So set an intention. And then here's where you just level that up a little bit is Figure out your goal, something that is achievable that's going to add to your bottom line to heal disease, to create health and well-being, right? Start there. Set the intention that it's something you are going to work towards, contribute to daily. So the intention has a daily component and then a 60 ounces or more. You know, I will do X, Y, Z towards X, Y, Z at least or more each day, something like that. This is how you level it up. How would it feel? Do you remember? And I said this in the intention already for you. The aspiration, the experience of if I, by the end of this month, if each day, by the end of February, each day, I drink 60 ounces or more of water, how am I going to feel? What is that experience going to do for me? How is it going to add value, improve my health, well-being, and the quality of life? So you just sit and reflect on that. Gosh, if each day this month I can drink 60 ounces or more of water, yes, I'm going to feel more hydrated. Gosh, my skin is going to be glowing. (laughs) I'm going to be filtering out toxins. I'm also going, my joints are going to feel better. I am going to feel mentally clearer. I'm going to just feel more flexible and fluid and my body is going to be nourished. Just envision those things, whether they're aesthetic or practical. So just create something, set an intention, start on February 1st and set one goal and do that little practice around that one goal. And if you need to write it down, put it on a post-it note, do something each day, restate the intention each day, contribute to each day. And when and if you fall a little bit short, It's, again, not about self-doubt or beating up on yourself. Be resilient. Just, you know, and that doesn't mean that if you set the water intention, you drink 120 ounces of water the next day. Okay, don't be, don't, don't do that because some of us can behave that way. Raising my hand over here, I might do something a little crazy over the top. But no, like just begin again. That's the resiliency of, okay, I kind of missed out today, but I'm back on track. I'm back on track. So the more consistency creates the traction. And that will help on the follow through of the energy of the one. And the reason I'm saying set this one goal for the month, because I do want to talk about intentions for 2024, that I want you to do because it's very real. It's very tangible. It's something you can do that's attainable and it will feel freaking good to do that, to create some effective change consistently to add to your bottom line of health, wealth, well-being, all the things. Okay, February 9th is the new moon in Aquarius. And I tell you what, I work with the new new and full moons and have for, I don't know, 12 or 13 years, pretty consistently. And I'll do some episodes on new and full moons here in the next couple of months to dive into really using those energies and I'll help you out. But 
February 9th is the new moon in Aquarius. So the sun and the moon are conjunct. They're holding hands. They're fused together in Aquarius. The sun represents vitality and life force. And the moon really represents our emotional body, our soul, our inner being. And when they fuse together, that's pretty powerful, right? It's the best time for seeding intentions, setting intentions, because the moon is it, the moon and the sun are together. It's dark. It's when it's when you plant things so they germinate. Guess what else? Mercury will have moved into Aquarius on the 5th. And then we'll have the sun and the moon together. Pluto is in Aquarius on the 9th, the same day as the new moon. Mars joins them. So we've got a stellium, which is three or more planets in a sign. And on the 16th, Venus enters Aquarius. So we are literally moving into this initiation of this Aquarian energy. And if you didn't listen to the Pluto and Aquarius podcast last week, check it out because there's so many details. And this is a an error. This is over the next 20 years, what we will be experiencing. But we're getting this big flush of energy that is Aquarian. And it's it. I can feel it. I can feel my brain, literally my consciousness firing, wiring, expanding. And I can't put all the puzzle pieces together. I don't think you can either. And I know you all know what I'm talking about because I've heard from you. And I've heard from people out in the world. It's like things are happening. I feel it. The energy systems are shifting. Consciousness is shifting. And you know what else is happening? And this is kind of amazing and I think brings a lot of solace to a world that's quite heavy and quite polarized and divided. The more polarity there is, the more decisiveness and division, it's like the center will not hold. The center will not hold. That's a that's a very famous article written, and I can't think of her name who wrote it. She was a famous journalist. She wrote The Center Will Not Hold. And then she also wrote that book about grief, The Year of Magical Thinking. If you are grieving, read The Year of Ma- Joan Didion. Joan Didion. <laughs> Thank you, Elizabeth. My producer just popped that up on my screen. I have to give Elizabeth kudos. She's she's on this podcast with me, just kind of helping me tap into some of this energy. Joan Didion, The Center Will Not Hold. But she wrote The Year of Magical Thinking, which is a wonderful book on grief because she She speaks to grief as a journalist, and she experienced a lot of trauma and a lot of very acute tragedy in a very rapid, small space of time. She lost her husband and she lost her daughter, and then she could not make sense of grief, and she basically reported on grief. And most of us out there have experienced some shape or form of grief, but but with death and dying... It is nonsensical, and she reports on it all the things that our minds do, and she calls it the year of magical thinking. Anyway, it's a great book. I I would definitely say check that out. So back to The Center Will Not Hold. This thing I was saying about solace is with all this divide, all this divisiveness, stuff that we have going on on the world stage, this split that's happening is actually bringing more of us together. It's so paradoxical. It's like a parable, right? You know, think about parables. Whenever you just get it, you lose it. And that's that's kind of like conscious contact with something greater, your higher power. But when something pulls so tightly, there's also something contracting tightly. And I feel like there is this coming together of humanity. It's like a new consciousness is being born. And if you listen to any spiritual teachers and channelers and folks that I like, they're all saying, like all of us, like so many of us are on the same page that 2024 and 2025 are these massive, not only change over years, they are massive evolutionary shifts in consciousness we are shifting, we are evolving, we are changing. And it's very much asking us to say, do I choose love? Do I choose compassion? Do I choose less stress? Do I choose the easier, softer way, the path of least resistance? Do I choose to go with the flow or do I want to keep fighting? Do I want to stay in this relationship that is maybe not healthy for me and maybe that is enabling this other person? How do I set a new boundary? How do I work on my health and well-being? Because when relationships shift, and hello, it's Valentine's 
Valentine's Day coming up, you know, relationships, love, all the things. I mean, there's love all the time. Valentine's Day is freaking day. But with relationships, when we start to evolve and change, sometimes the dynamics in our relationships change. Sometimes we outgrow people. Sometimes people outgrow us. But sometimes we outgrow stories. We outgrow patterns of behavior. I've done that. I know most of you can relate to that. I, you know, think about being, for me, you know, I'm in my 40s. My 20s were not are not my 40s. I was a different person in relationship, romantically, friendship-wise, professionally, family-wise in my 20s than I am in my 40s. And my 30s were a whole other phase as well. So when I grow, it's important for me to be accountable to how I show up and how I communicate in relationships. And am I perpetuating health, value, compassion, kindness, love, well-being? Or am I contributing to disharmony, dysfunction, chaos, arguments, stress? And, and how can I be responsible for my part? That goes back to the energy of the one. And last but not least on the energy, all planets are direct. All of the planets in the sky are direct until April 1st. And on April f- Fool's Day, Mercury goes retrograde. It's kind of cheeky, right? Uh, April Fool's Day, Mercury goes retrograde. But until then, we've got February and March with all of the planets giving us this gorgeous wind in our sails, this very divine energy, and then starting February out with this one initiator energy in the numerological code on the Aquarius new moon on the 9th, that's when I am setting my new year intentions. Of course, I have set some intentions. I have written some things out, but I have clarified them. I have tweaked them. I have made room for and let go of some things because that's what January made space for with the nine month. It was like, wait a minute, what BS are you still doing and carrying around and buying into that actually is not contributing to your heart's desires, your goals, your aims, your vision for this year of empowerment that you have laid at your feet. And I needed this last month to get clear on some things, to tap into my soul and myself and my energy better and stronger. And I know you all did too. Guess what? February, embrace, get clear, write this stuff down, use the new moon, do some journaling, write out a few things that you envision. What would you like to experience, materialize, realize? I'm using bigger words here, not what are your goals? What are your resolutions? Those things are very linear. That's a very one dimensional way of looking at things. I would say it like, what do I want to realize over the course of 2024? What do I want to actualize? What do I want to experience? What aspirations am I worthy of and ready to fulfill. That's a much more expansive language than what do I want to achieve? Now, remember, I did ask you to put kind of a goal down and then we tapped higher into it because that will help you ground in and solidify. And speaking of grounding in, I've had some really great listener communications and emails recently. One that I want to share is from a listener. Her name is Amy. You have to send someone. What's going on? Well, whatever it is, that's our entire emergency force on the way somewhere. They're saying there's a body in the woods. Excuse me, I don't seem to recognize you. Um, that's because I'm not from here. A small town stuck in the past. There's only one cell tower, and currently it's out of order. With secrets hidden for centuries. We hear things, you know, when they whisper or when they think they're alone. And a curious stranger who may be their only chance for survival. I'm talking about the murder and disappearance in small town New Hampshire. What do you think? I'm sorry, have you ever listened to a single true crime podcast? You turn up in Danville just as the town sees its first real crime in decades? This is Consumed, an all-new supernatural audio thriller inspired by the novel by Aaron Mankey. I did not wake up this morning prepared to deal with forces beyond my understanding. Please, I call that breakfast. Listen to Consumed on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Hi, it's Jenna Ashkowitz. And Kevin McHale. 
hosts of And That's What You Really Miss podcast. We're reliving the magic of McKinley High by watching all six seasons of Glee. Whether you were Team Rachel, shipped Curtin Blaine, or couldn't get enough of Sue Sylvester's zingers, we've got you covered. Join us every week as we dive deep into the world of show choirs and teenage drama. We're breaking down every episode from the highs of nationals to the lows of slushy attacks. We have exclusive interviews with some of your favorite Glee cast members like Chris Colfer, Amber Riley, Darren Chris, Heather Morris, Alex Newell, and so many more. Plus, we're taking you behind the scenes with the creators, writers, producers, and crew members like Ryan Murphy, Ian Brennan, and executive music producer Adam Anders. We're even getting the chance to chat with the music icons whose songs were featured on the show, from the Go-Go's to Jason Mraz to Rick Springfield. Meet us in the choir room while we reveal our greatest memories and untold stories. Listen to And That's What You Really Miss podcast on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Hey everyone, it's Sophia Bush, host of the podcast Work in Progress. I am thrilled to tell you that Work in Progress is back for a third season. My friends, it has never been more important than right now for us to have all of these big conversations. Together, we are going to get educated, a little bit enlightened, and we will definitely be entertained. I started Work in Progress because I'm a curious person and I realized there are so many people I get to speak to that are fascinating and rare. (laughs) And so I thought, why not take these conversations out into the world? I'm going to be having deep chats with thought leaders, newsmakers, celebrities, entertainers, authors, elected officials, and more. You can join us and listen to Work in Progress on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to podcasts. I've had some really great listener communications and emails recently. One that I want to share is from a listener. Her name is Amy. And first thing, thanks, Amy, for the fabulous email and the shout out. She she says, I really enjoy listening, laughing and going, yes, along with all of them. All of the podcast is what she's referring to. And that really gave me so much joy because when I'm listening to something, learning and engaging, I'm like, yes, oh my gosh. So it it like it felt good that you you say yes when something clicks. She shared something really insightful that I want to share with you all. She says, I am a Pisces and I feel like I do battle with myself from time to time. Well, we all know you Pisces out there, you deep feelers, y'all go down to the depths. And of course you do battle like down at the bottom of the ocean with a straight jacket on like Houdini. And then when you all rise up, you rise up with more love, more heart space than any of us. So she says, I'm a Pisces. I feel like I do battle with myself from time to time. I also have no earth at all in my chart. So I keep plants, crystals, and I try to ground myself as often as I can throughout the days. What she's referring to is in her astrological natal chart, she doesn't have much earth. So that would be Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn. She doesn't have many planets in earth. I get that. I don't have many fire planets in my chart. So I know my missing element, you know, the one that is the weakest, the weakest representation is my fire. For her, it's her earth. And Deborah Silverman, by the way, who's a great astrologer, wrote a whole book on this called The Missing Element. So if you know your chart and you want to dive a little deeper, love The Missing Element by Deborah Silverman. That's a great place to go. But Amy is very aware of this. So she says, so what I do, because she doesn't have much earth, is she keeps plants, crystals to ground herself as often as she can. That is so smart. When you know what your missing element is, like if your missing element is water, go to the pool, take baths, go visit the ocean, be on a lake, have a a pond or running water, like anything that denotes water, you're engaging with that element. If your missing element is air, then hello, that's not only the wind and being outside and breathing in the fresh air. It's using your breath, of course, but it also air denotes the mind. So 
it's about thinking and communicating, but breathing in the air. So, and fire, of course, hello, that's where my missing element is, which isn't just about literal fire. And I tell you what, I've lit a fire in the house the last few days because it is cooler here and I've enjoyed it. And I tell you what, when the fire is going, there's something mystical about that heat, that warmth that, that creates a spark. And knowing where your missing element is and how to respond to that and put it into your energy field is so brilliant. So thank you for that, Amy. But what she also says, and this is so cool, this is why I wanted to share this with you all. I'm getting ready to relocate myself from the beach to the mountains, and I'm pretty sure this will help with my grounding. You know what is great about that? Yes, Amy, that's very cool. Super excited for your move from the beach to the mountains, but just recognizing that you're going to be able to hike. You're going to be able to get outside. You're going to be full of abundant nature that has a very different flavor and energetic resonance than does the beach and the ocean. We all know this. And, you know, it's funny in my human design it says that my place is valleys. I have one friend and her place is the marketplace. And uh, my place is, I resonate with valleys. And guess what? Where I live in Wimberley is a valley. I got married here, you know, when I started my journey in sobriety, this is where I ended up in a treatment center a long time ago. Um, yeah, it's like I have been, my, my mother, we moved back here and moved my mother here. And of course, this is where she spent the last year of her life. So this valley, this Wimberley Valley, has held space for me in very transformative stages and phases for me. So Amy, shout out to you. May there be transformation for you this year and through the earth, because guess what? By not having that earth element as present and you consciously saying, I'm going to add earth, this missing element into my life, you are saying, I'm ready to engage with helping raise the vibration of earth, engaging with earth energies. And there is a lot happening on Mother Earth. And the earth is shifting. The earth is healing. The earth is trying to give us new energy. So, Amy, you are grounding in new energies, not only for yourself, but I have a feeling you're going to have some pretty powerful spiritual consciousness transformations. I wouldn't be surprised if those mountains talk to you. So just let me know when they do. Thank you so much for that insight and sharing what you do. I hope I hope that helps everybody else out there as well. I also got a great question from a listener. Her name is Elizabeth and she has this amazing question that I think will resonate with you all. She says, "I was wondering how to know when to take a big leap." She says, the universe has been sending her messages that it's time to let go and they've been getting stronger. Maybe 2024 is her year. She says that she has wanted to be an artist for a long time and hasn't had the guts to try this. She has a good job right now. It's fulfilling. She also has a family. So, so her income, her source of income is important. So many of us can resonate with this. I have a big call in my soul, yet... How do I take that leap of faith? When do I take that leap of faith? I have a good job. I have responsibilities. I have bills to pay. How do I make these things happen? And Elizabeth says, maybe 2024 is my year. Yes, yes. And I'm going to speak to you directly shortly, Elizabeth, because I do have some insights for you. Thank you for this question. But for everyone out there, if you have a day job, you have a career, and maybe you have gone to school for that career, you know, you could be a dental hygienist and you really want to open a coffee shop, right? <laughs> like you're like, gosh, I went to school for this. I have a really good job. I have really good hours. I've got to put food on the table. I've got to pay my student loans. Like all the things that we all experience, you're not just going to say hasta la vista people and then go get a loan from the bank and open a, you know, a coffee shop. No, it doesn't work that way. We've got to get our ducks in a row. So first of all, just the fact that you have a call in your soul and something on your heart like Elizabeth does, she wants to be a full-time artist. So Elizabeth, I imagine that you are already doing art. You've been doing art on the side. It's your passion. This for you specifically, Elizabeth, is an incremental year. 
Okay, this is not the year where you full on leave your job and you are a full blown artist. Okay, so I'm not busting your bubble. I, that should actually make you go, okay, the, yes, it's real. Yes, it's there. But I will tell you that 2025 is your freaking year. So just take the pressure out of the tires. But guess what? Pull your bootstraps up because you got work to do. And the work is pretty brilliant because it's not about it being stressful. It's about it freaking being fun. If anybody out there has a desire in their heart, something they want to be when they grow up, a new passion, a business they want to start, maybe you want to start a coaching business. I have walked so many people through massive career shifts, lots of healers, lots of coaches, CEOs who have made big, big shifts in who they are and what they do and what their avocation is. But not many people just bust out and leave. So guess what? You get your ducks in a row. What does it take for me to live on a month? So you do your budget. You know, what does it take for me to live on a month? What do I have in the bank? How many months reserve do I have? And I know I'm being really practical in this answer right now. It's not all going to be practical. It's going to be magical too. But there's a lot of magic in the practical of planning of, okay, do I have three months reserve? So it helps me get up and running. Do I have six months reserve? Because here's the deal. If you take a leap of faith, even if you're prepared and your well of financial resources is not quite abundant enough, the stress and the fear and the anxiety of getting clients, making sales, making the business come to life, it'll backfire on you. You'll have the stress and the underlying anxiety, and then you won't be able to give your full-blown heart and soul and space and creativity and passion to your longing, to your avocation. So making sure you really get your reserves ready. Do I have the time and the space? But simultaneously, and specifically for you, Elizabeth, I want you to know February for you is like get your ducks in a row month. That's why I keep harping on that because it's like they won't shut up for me to say that to everyone, but really to say it to you is do the math, get your budget, figure out what it would cost, figure out who your audience is to, who would you sell to, where would you network, where would you put your artwork on display and get out and talk to people. This is also a reconnaissance month. So while you're balancing your budget over there and you're planning and you're figuring out and you're starting to plan on putting money aside, and you've probably already done a little bit of that, you got to go network. Like they're saying, this is also a networking month of, gosh, would I be able to display my art in this coffee shop or in this art gallery? Or who do I go connect with? Who do I go meet? Who who inspires me? So you got to get your tribe, your community, your people, and your name out there of, I'm an artist. And don't say, I'm an artist, but I, I work full time at, mm-mm. No, I'm an artist. I do this. You know, would there be any room for me? How do you accept new artists? When? Do, how do you choose the artwork that you put up on these walls or an art fair? You know, in the spring. Hello, freaking spring. And Elizabeth, for the spring, there have got to be some amazing art fairs that are happening wherever you live. This month, research that. This month, send an email out. When are there some art fairs coming up in March or April? I will tell you this, that June is a very opportunistic month. I feel like you're actually going to make some decent slash significant money with your art in June. So just know that by getting your ducks in a row, putting yourself out there consistently, starting to put some money away, starting to plan, decide what the name of your LLC is, get an LLC, or you don't have to do exactly that, but I'm just giving you food for thought. Get a website, make a Facebook page, what or Instagram, or all of those little things. You do not have to do them all this month, but between now and June, the networking and that confluence of consistently initiating starting planting seeds, making contacts, boom, there's going to be some massive shifts in and opportunities that come through in June. And I will tell you this, come July, you're going to freaking want to quit your job. <laughs> Not because you're full on ready to embrace this new profession and your dream, but because you're going to be tired at work and you're going to be like, I just want time to do my art. Why can't I be a big artist now? So do not be discouraged because that's how the energy works. It gives us these kind of moments of breakthrough and rewards. And then it may discourage us a little bit because it says, hey, are you really true to yourself? Are you true to your dream? Are you true to your soul? And hey, you got what it takes, girl. And that's when you say, heck, yeah, 
podcast, not quitting my job yet because that's, I'm just not going to do that. I'm not piecing out yet because when I do this, all systems are going to be a go. The green light is going to be on. And that's really what 2025, especially into probably the first three or four months of 2025, is going to feel like to you. August is also a very empowered month for you. You're going to feel directed. You're going to see where you're going as an artist and where your voice is and where you can make sales. Even online, they keep saying being able to promote your work online and using networks to help with SEO. I, I don't even They're just giving me all sorts of information for you. But anyone listening out there, you see how what she said is, when do I take a leap of faith? You know, yes, she's already taken baby steps towards her goal, but she's too scared to make this leap. If you're still too scared, you're not ready yet because there's something in you that is doubting that I am an artist. And that's where you start in February, Elizabeth, is I am an artist. What do you do, Elizabeth? I'm an artist. You know, and you can say, well, I do work over here and do this, but I'm an artist and I'm creating art. You can find my art on or, oh, if you're interested or you know somebody that's interested, you speak as if I am an artist. So if you are scared, you start speaking it into life. And when you feel that fear, say it's coming. Things are aligning. Things are divinely being orchestrated for me. So if you are out there and you have a big dream and you're wanting to make a departure from one profession to another, Get your ducks in a row, certainly. Take the baby steps towards your aspiration, but also start communicating it. Start networking it. Start building your sphere of influence in the world with this personality, this individual that is inside you wanting to be born and come out because the doors this year will open. This is a great year if anyone has it on their heart to make a big change, to really clarify what's on their heart and then start practicing it, articulating it, communicating it, sharing it and testing it out in the world. Where does it stick? Who is my audience? Where do I feel engaged? And when am I having fun? When am I in my element? So thank you so much, Elizabeth, for that. 2025, you will make tremendous strides this year. You will also be impatient with yourself. Don't let that sidetrack you. Just know that your energy field is really clarifying your dreams so you know it deep down in your bones and the right people, communities, and networks show up to help support you making this a reality. And you're a beautiful communicator, by the way. They just told me that. They says you have a gift of self, creative self-expression and you're such a communicator. To know you is to love you. So when you network out in the world, your energy is infectious. So I'm sure that resonates because I'm just smiling because I'm like, oh my gosh, if she just gets out there and networks, she freaking can like turn gold into things she touches. So when you do it with with something that is on your heart, it will start to flourish, but be patient with yourself. So your patience will be tested. And again, to anyone out there who is thinking about this, clarify your dream, start the networking, but also work on healing the fear and the self-doubt because that imposter syndrome that people talk about that we all experience, that voice is a real limitation in terms of your manifestation. Thank you so much for the listener feedback. We absolutely love hearing from you. It makes my day. And I I love the insights that you all share, the things that you're noticing, what's working for you, where you're challenged, your tools and tricks. And I know they resonate with other people. So keep them coming. If you want to reach out and email us, it's podcast at soulsessions.me. This is a fantastic month of initiation energy. So gear up, engage, 
If you're wanting to ground in and clarify this energy more, definitely check out the guidebook. It's at soulpathology.com and there's an audio companion that goes with it. And the audio companion, I think it's pretty fabulous because the guidebook is very detailed. It's very systematic. It's month over month. It is very conscious in how the energy works month over month this year, but the audio companion levels it up. It's something you can listen to while you're driving. You can go back month over month and you can review the months prior. You can look into the months in the future. You can do this with the guidebook, but you can also do it with the audio companion. But in the audio companion, I really add in a lot of antidotes and personal experiences with those energies and how you may experience them. So it's really me channeling and riffing on the energy as I move through the guidebook. So the audio companion is great. And if you do get the audio companion, just a heads up, the audio companion is for January through July. There will be a part two of the audio companion that I release in June or July because I want to be in the energies so I can offer the second half of the year and January of 2025. And just a heads up, the guidebook itself goes through January of 2025. I don't drill down big time into January, but I give you a preview of 2025 and the nine energy. And guess Guess what? The nine energy is a big old energy. So the eight is a big setup for that. And they meld together beautifully because the, the energies do that. The guidebook gives you a solid, consistent foundation to clarify your point of attraction in whatever you have going on in your world, your challenges and your aspirations alike, and how you can find greater meaning and purpose. And also, not only empowerment, of course, because that's what the eight energy is about, but so you can manifest, you can live the life of your dreams now, you can bring heaven onto earth, even in a world that may say the opposite. Let's be the change, let's be the rebel rousers and be the change in our own life because that one spark can start a whole wildfire. And and that's what we're all doing individually, so many of us seekers and collectively. Thank you all for joining me. I hope you listen to next week's episode. I've got a listener reading with a gal named Jessica who bravely came on and um, she's lost a son and her son comes through in the session with some very powerful messages. She's, She's really gone through some very drastic and traumatic experiences, but she is not only a survivor, she's a thriver and has grown through her trauma. I think you will all resonate with it very deeply and find some similarities and parallels and also some inspiration from that soul session and and what she brings to the table. So definitely join us. I hope you all are well and tap into February. Here we go, 2024. Take care, everybody. Season two of The Unimaginable hones in on individuals who have led unimaginable lives by following their instinct from guests like Taika Waititi. Stick to your to your vision of what you're trying to do. It's just more pure. The failure is more pure and the success is more pure. This season delivers behind the scenes conversations about the many roads to success. Listen to The Unimaginable on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Scott Barry Kaufman, host of The Psychology Podcast. I'm a cognitive scientist, and I've written 10 books and hundreds of articles on topics such as intelligence, introversion, and education. The Psychology Podcast is a place where we investigate the different ways in which we can unlock human potential, and where I get to interview some of the most extraordinary and fascinating people, and we have real conversations about what it means to achieve success and what it means to be human. Listen to The Psychology Podcast on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Hey everyone, it's Sophia Bush, host of the podcast Work in Progress, and I am thrilled to tell you that Work in Progress is back for a third season. It has never been more important than right now to have these conversations with all of you so that we can get educated, enlightened, and we can all be entertained. I will be sitting down and having deep conversations with thought leaders, newsmakers, celebrities, elected officials, and more. Listen to Work in Progress on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to podcasts.